Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm the founder of the completerableguide.com. Today we have Vera Terman with us, and she's here to uh, talk about food addiction. Um, she has a great story to tell. She is the director of a facility that deals with food addiction, and she's also written a book called Food Junkies, and she has a website uh, that has a lot of valuable information. She's also a co-host on a podcast about food addiction. And she's here today to share her information and to go over some great information to help us and people who ha might have problems with food addiction or just, you know, have cravings with sugar and just don't know how to stop. So, Vera, can you tell people a little about yourself? I'm so excited to have you on the show. Uh, thank you, Stacey. Thanks for asking me to uh, come on onto your show. Um, I I've been talking about this issue for so long. Uh, so my background is that I'm a medical doctor. I am an addictions physician in Toronto, Canada, and uh, we've been um, uh, I've been working in the field of uh, um, drug and alcohol addiction since 2007 um, as a medical director of three treatment centers. And in in the uh, work that I've done, um, what I saw repeatedly, and this is what I like to talk about is that when people uh, you know, came in with an addiction like to cocaine or alcohol or you know, even marijuana um, and found that when they put down their substance, they ended up eating, eating, eating. And um, the behavior was exactly the same. And it was very distressing because people would say, I don't wanna gain all this weight. Um, and they found that they really struggled with stopping. And, and uh, once I saw that, it's like, you can't unsee that. I just saw that everywhere. And then I started to see it in the general population, um, how people would, you know, the, from the little kid that's having the tantrum at the uh, grocery store, I want that candy. And I, you know, mom says I can't have it. Um, uh, to the adult having a similar tantrum, um, but it may not look quite the same, but they're struggling in that same way. Uh, and so I thought, well, you know, I want to talk about this as a sort of public ish, public health issue. And uh, I, you know, I have my own histories, which I guess drives my passion about this. So it's not just a, uh, a public health issue, although that's how I'm sort of I'm naming it. Uh, but, you know, my own history, like so many young women in my uh, 20s in university, uh, you know, try to control my weight. I mean, I look at the pictures of how I looked then and I look fine, but in my mind, I thought I was fat and, and needed to lose, you know, at least 30 or 40, like, you know, that thing you can never yes. eat. Um, and so I started to um, diet ridiculously. Um, and then like so many of, of my uh, generation, I, not just my generation, of, of women in general, when, once I started focusing on eating and uh, weight loss, it became my obsession. And uh, so I would lose weight only to gain it back and then lose and gain and lose and weight. And it, it just became an obsession that um, I couldn't actually relieve myself from until I started using, listening to my advice. Um, I'm gonna treat this like an addiction and that made all the difference. And it's made all the difference for me uh, for 15 years. I haven't had sugar for 15 years. Oh, wow, uh, that's amazing. I haven't had a flour, uh, like, you know, like bread or, or, or muffins. And I loved muffins at one point, but I haven't had any of that stuff for um, seven years or maybe 10 years. And then I cut out grains even. And I, I'm not saying that people have to do that, but it worked for me about seven years ago. And, you know, I've maintained that weight that I wanted to be when I was 25. Right. Um, um, and I don't struggle with eating anymore. And that's the key. It's not the weight. It's, it's the fact that I don't struggle anymore. Um, and so, you know, it's a public health issue, which we can talk about why sugar is so toxic, but it's also a struggle. It's a real yeah. struggle. It's an addiction issue. And that's the piece a lot of people will get, okay, yeah, sugar is a problem. Um, you know, it causes diabetes, it causes uh, uh, weight gain, but they don't really, they don't, so many people don't want to get that it's actually an addiction, just like drugs and alcohol. And right. that's really what I like to talk about. And I've realized from my own past that when it comes to addiction, you know, sometimes we have addictive behaviors, but mm -hmm. also 
we use a, we use addiction we 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 focus on it as a coping mechanism we might be had we have problems in our childhood or we have problems today or you know and we use it as a coping mechanism some people will use a cigarette some people will take drugs some people use alcohol and some people use food as a oh, way absolutely. to cope with their stresses yeah. in life you know yeah. and, and you know, and mainly uh, what we see uh, maybe not so much now anymore but definitely uh, you know 20 30 years ago um, men would pick up booze to manage their emotions their anger and their their loneliness uh, and women would pick up food before they picked up booze and and it, now women are picking up alcohol as well but but definitely in in my generation and you know like i guess pre-2000 people were women were doing the food they were doing the baking they were doing the all that kind of stuff and now they're doing both <laughs> Now, what happens when someone is in denial? They have a problem, they have this food addiction, but they don't want to face it because they're afraid of change. They know that if they, yeah. it's easier to be in denial and say, I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem. But if mm -hmm. they, you know, so they stay in denial and they're hurting themselves. They're destroying yeah. their bodies by yeah. be, using food as a coping mechanism. You so know, what it, do you do for someone like that? Yeah, so, so one of the things that's interesting to know is that this concept of denial, you know, like, like you're describing, I don't really have a problem, or I can manage this, or I'll go on my diet tomorrow, um, or uh, you know, let me just have one and I'll stop at two. I'll stop. I promise I'll stop at two. Um, that, that kind of thinking is is very specific to addictive thinking, and and the person who's not in denial, who's not an addict, is the person that will say, yeah, you know, I think I don't really think I want to have that cigarette or that cookie because then I'll probably want a couple more. Or, and if they have uh, one or two uh, of whatever it is, and then they go, you know what, this is a bit of a problem. Like when they have that clarity, that's mm -hmm. usually a sign that there's no addiction um, because they have the clarity. It's just like you wouldn't, um, you know, choose to eat sour, drink sour milk if you don't like it. Or, I don't know. It, 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 there's a clarity about it and you can use your reason and ration. But when you start to bargain and conjole yourself and lie to yourself that's actually a sign that there's an addiction in the works because you don't like once you're in that pull of of, of wanting a substance you know then it's like you, you don't want to admit this but how will i live without this substance if you're used to having a, a you know a couple of glasses of wine at night to fall asleep or to chill after a busy day you know, if you to say, I'm not going to do that anymore. So, well, what would I do then? And similarly, if you're used to having a tub of ice cream or big load of, I don't know, some favorite food that you'll have at night after meal, like after your dinner in order to just chill or, or have feel better and go to sleep, um, you're not going to, you're not going to see that as an addiction. So it just the, the person who's not an addict will know I shouldn't be eating this stuff and I won't, but the addict will say, it's not really a problem. And it's so common that most that I think actually there's a lot of undiagnosed food. If you don't like the word food addiction, let's start just with the word sugar addiction, because a lot of people will go that far um, to say, yeah, I have a struggle with sugar. But people don't want to admit that because, like you said, the denial. So do, does a person have to hit rock bottom until they get a, an illness or they, they and even sometimes when people get illnesses due to their eating habits, they That's still don't matter. change. It's, so yeah, no. Absolutely. We have, we have a diabetic uh, and, and an obesity crisis uh, right now. Like, what is it we like? We do. Two thirds of the population are, are, are obese or overweight at least. And, and actually by 2024, it's supposed to be one quarter of the population is normal weight. Everybody else is not. They're overweight or obese. One. So in other words, three quarters of the population in a couple of years. Um, and, and the stigmatism in society, you know, yeah. they're, they're given the impression that obesity is OK. You look at models and they mm -hmm. they are overweight. You look at society and you could just look around and you see people are overweight. You see people uh -huh. having trouble walking because of yeah. the excess weight that they're yeah. carrying. Yeah. And yeah. you could see how toxic it is for their bodies and what they're going through. And society is saying, well, it's OK. It's beautiful. It's, you know, everyone's beautiful. Oh. But yeah. being oh. obese, you know. Yeah. you're 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 opening up the door for diabetes you're opening up the door for heart yeah. problems high cholesterol heart attacks stroke and you can the list goes on so right. 
explain to people how toxic sugar and obesity yeah. so, is. So th this concept of, you know, loving your body, no matter what, like, they, they, like, I understand the thinking behind it. So I, even me, I, I'm going to say that being obese is not healthy. And I'm going to say that eating sugar is not healthy, but I'm not, I don't want to fat shame people. I don't want to make them feel bad about themselves. So if they want to feel good about how they look, fine, it's all good. But nevertheless, still, please stop eating foods that are damaging your body. And then by the way, when you stop doing that, you will lose that weight. Because I honestly, let, let's be honest about this, that the people who are, 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 are trying to see themselves as looking beautiful, even though they're 300 pounds or whatever, they still would rather if they could lose weight, because they don't feel well, like, like you said, they're sore, they can't go up the stairs, they're huffing and puffing. I know when I was 100 pounds more, I constantly tried to say it's okay, Vera, you're still a good person, you still look good. But I hated how I felt. I couldn't go up the stairs anymore. I had to use a cane to go up a hill. It's like at the age of 30, I'm using a cane. Uh, like I didn't want to be that place. So, but I would never say um, uh, to, to stop eating sugar, focus on weight, leave the weight alone, love what you are and, and be weight neutral, if anything. You don't have to be weight positive, weight hating, just be weight neutral. The weight will take care of itself if you eat the right food. And, and it, you know, we're asking for you to have a health conscious diet, not a weight conscious one, because it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You're going to end right. up doing crazy things like surgery when you don't need to, not saying yeah. surgery not sometimes necessary, but for many people, um, you don't need to do the surgery. You can just change your diet and you can lose a hundred pounds. Like exactly. And, and keep it off. And uh, I see you, it more and more in common society. People are, people are getting, yeah. they, they're getting the surgeries done and they're getting, they're getting yeah. all these unnecessary procedures done on their body when yeah. it doesn't have to happen. And once you open yourself up to surgery, once the oxygen goes into your body, your whole chemistry yeah. inside your body changes and then yeah. more problems can occur. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. And, and then you get the Michael Jackson syndrome where you go back for a second one and a third one and a fourth one because yeah. you, you, you lose weight. Absolutely. But then you gain it back again if you don't change your diet. And right. I'm, change the diet to begin with. And then maybe you won't need the surgery or you'll only need one as opposed to four. Like I've heard of people going back for a fourth time. Like yes. that's crazy. It because is. You will lose. You'll just lose. You'll just gain it back. Plus, like you said, tons of complications. Of course, the medical profession and, and the, the surgical, they, they like this, this approach. Um, and the approach that you and I are talking about, which is let's find a better way to eat. There's no money to be made off of this. Like I'm not getting paid to do these podcasts. I mean, is, what, what am I selling? Nothing. Right. I'm exactly. Selling is a, is, is a, is a mental concept, which is let's, let's embrace um, the body we should have by eating the foods that our bodies were meant for. And our food, was, we were not meant to eat this toxic processed stuff that, that many of us are eating. You know, when we go to uh, the, the drive-in, whatever. Right. And the, and the cookie shop and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's not, our body was not made for that. And it, and it's getting sicker, 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 sicker. And, you know, when people know when they're diabetic and obese, that, that this isn't good, but that's, this is the thing. It's addictive. It's, and it's addictive. hard to put it down. Yeah. And, but, you know, we have a, I have a good message. Those of us in this field, we have a good message, which is it's really hard to put down. Yes. Number one. Yes. But number two, it's not forever. If you actually put it down and get the support, let's call that withdrawal. It's, it's addiction withdrawal, just like the person who has a hard time quitting smoking, um, who has a hard time drinking. Once they stop a month later, oh my God, they feel so much better. And that happens with sugar too. Like it, it's not actually uh, that much pain. It's it, the pain is more in the worrying about it ahead of time. Oh my God, how am I not going to have this food? Yeah. Uh, that's where people suffer. Or they I quit for a few days and then they 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 break down again. You have to ride through that wave. Now I see so many people. It's like a roller coaster ride for them. They do so well for so long. I've had so many people that I've known that have cut out the sugar out of their diet. They felt like yeah. a new person. They looked in the yeah. mirror. They loved themselves. And yeah. then it's it, you know then they start putting the pounds back on. And it's not yeah. because they don't they don't want to it's just it, it it's hard to stay away from that sugar it's yeah, hard to stay away from those toxic foods and yeah. and also maybe they do have some issues that 
that they're not dealing with. So where, where yeah. do the people start? What's step one? How does a person have successful weight loss? And also, how does a, a person overcome oh. food addiction? Yeah, yeah. So how do they keep that weight off by not having the food calling to them? Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned two things, you know, you know, what do you do first? And then what is the thing in a way that keeps calling, calling you back? And if there's emotional issues. So earlier on, you had said that, um, you know, if you've got emotional issues, like from the past or distress, or you're in a marriage that's not working, or you hate your job. Uh, and, you know, so we use food to comfort ourselves because food is comfort. Like, yes, we're as animals, we love food because we have to, it's, it's essential, you know, food and sex and drinking water is like, these are essential things to be alive as a human being. Right. So so we like them, uh, but but if we ate this the, the natural food and drank water instead of booze, uh, th then um, we wouldn't be addicted. It's the fact that the food industry has made these foods more than what we actually like, and then we we want more. Uh, but so so the goal is number one, you have to deal with your emotional stuff. But but if if you see this as an addiction as long as the drug is in the way, like if I'm struggling with my job and I hate it, and so I drink to get through the day because it's I'm a cop and I don't know how to sleep at night because it's a horrible day at work, uh, so I drink. Well, I, I can go to a therapist and talk about how much I hate my job, but if I keep drinking the, the, or, or eating because it works the same way, then, then that substance is getting in the way of my making any change in my life. Right. So in an addiction framework, this may not be a framework for other people, but in if you're thinking, if you're, if you're going to say, yeah, maybe let's try Vera's approach that this is an addiction, then you have to stop the substance first so that you don't have it in the way of repair. Right. Uh, then you're going to go, oh my God, how do I deal with? Well, now I go to my therapist and I make changes. Um, but you can't do that usually in the first week because you're still needing that substance. Right. So the first month you say, I'm not going to eat or whatever the substance is, I'm not going to smoke cigarettes, whatever it is, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put all sorts of support into place. This is not for life. You don't have to do this all your life, like call somebody every day or, or, you know, don't go to a restaurant where there's too much uh, enticing, go to a wedding where there's booze and food all over the place. You're just going to do it for that month to protect your sobriety, as it were, because in a month, it's going to be easier. And then number two, step two is you have to start dealing with those issues because they're going to call. You're going to say, Vera, how do I deal with my unhappy marriage or unhappy job? And, and if, if you don't do that, then you're going to pick up the substance that has been helping you but number one is stop the substance then deal with the emotional stuff and then for those of for those people who have like you said many people lost weight and then they gained it back um uh they did really well until maybe month four and then they slipped um uh if it's an addiction perspective which is what i'm proposing then you have to think okay i wasn't eating the sugar but what else was I addicted to in my food? And this is why I like the word food addiction instead of sugar addiction. Because right. it's, sugar is number one. But there are other things in that processed food industry spending a lot of money to put all sorts of triggers to make yes. sure that if I quit the sugar, I'm going to do something else. So look yes. at those keto, those keto programs. Uh, you, you, you do keto, you're not eating sugar because it's not keto. Uh, right. But you know what they do? The food industry says, okay, she's not going to eat sugar, but let's put artificial sweetener and let's put a ton of fat and let's put a ton of this stuff and we'll call it a keto bar. Yeah, right. Zero carbs, but it's still addictive. Exactly. Uh, and so then that's the thing that gets the person to trip up on month four. Yeah. And pick up the sugar again. You know, it's like, it's so toxic, you know, and I get so angry because when I went to Europe, half the food they have in America, they do not sell in Europe. It is disbarred. They will not sell those <laughs> products in Europe. Right. And, right. and, you know, and in America, okay. there are so many things they put in the foods that trigger the yeah. receptors in the brain to make yes. you want more, to make you crave more, just like Absolutely. you were saying. Absolutely. And they make everything look so wonderful and so delicious. Well, when, yes. you know, you see things that are so bright and colorful, why are they so bright and colorful? That's 
not yeah. the way they look when they come off the trees. Think about it. What yeah. are they inject in? What are they put? What substance or ingredients That's are they yeah. put in? And what you know these triggers people don't realize. And when the and when these substances go into your body, your body doesn't know what to do with it. So exactly. it stores it, and yeah. and and it can't break it down. So it stores it in the body, and your 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 organs are becoming slower. You're becoming more sluggish. You're not feeling good. You're <laughs> you know you're a different a triggers in your brain for for addictive triggers are going off. Your body is just getting totally. It's it's like a chaotic roller coaster, That's and right. you know and maybe you can explain to people how toxic sugar really is to the body because some people don't you know you see you see so many things nowadays that are so unhealthy for you in yeah. the food stores explain to people how toxic sugar is so addictive for you yeah well you know one one way that we can see this is that there's a fellow um that, that has written a lot about this in an almost historical context his name is gary tobes and he actually writes um uh, the end of sugar, and he talks about the, the, exactly what you're asking about. Um, and uh, he he says that um, you know he, here's an example of how toxic sugar is. You can visually imagine this that that uh, the, the the incidence of diabetes a hundred years ago because the processed food industry really started. Uh, I guess in the 1940s, uh, during World War II. Uh, it started before that, but in terms of population, uh, uh, affecting the population, and then bigger and bigger and bigger until now, it's huge. Um, and so prior to 1940s, so like 100 years ago, there was maybe one in 100 people who had diabetes. And now we're looking at one in 10. Like that yeah. is an exponential drunk, junk, junk, and a, a jump. And it's not because of us, it's because of the foods we're eating. And more than that, in my my generation, when, when I was eating badly as, as a teenager, um, we still call type 2 diabetes mature onset. In other words, 40, 50 plus. Yeah. Now we're seeing it with kids. And why Crazy. are we seeing it with kids? Because we're giving kids cereals. We're giving kids fruit juice. We're giving basically sugar versions of sugar. So what? how is sugar toxic? Number one, diabetes. Uh, you know, you flood the system with uh, uh, sugar because you know, World Health Organization says we should not be eating more than uh, six teaspoons of sugar a day. Six teaspoons of sugar a day. How much is in a can of Coca-Cola right now? Oh, forget about it. <laughs> I mean, it's already, it's your week's supply in one drink. Yeah, um, it's definitely your day's supply. And some people will drink four of those. Plus, they'll I mean, if you drink, drink one of those bottles, I mean, that's a month's supply right there. Um, so, so, and so it's, it's, it, it, and so World Health Organization says not more than four to six or six, let's say six. Now, how much do you need? Zero. You don't need any because it's in your food. It's right. plenty in your food. But how much added sugar you don't want to eat more is, is, is six teaspoons. If you do more than that, you're going to overwhelm the pancreas and overwhelm the organs. Like you were saying, you're going to you're going to uh, make too much sugar, which then essentially starts to break down the whole system because the the body is meant to deal with this sugar, translate the sugar into energy. And I don't need that much energy. Like, I just don't need that much. So it's going right. to go into fat and it's going to go into fat, not just my fat cells, but also fatty liver, fatty pancreas. It's going to go into fatty organs, which, and that's the stuff that kills me in uh, probably 15, 20 years. Like we're, we're talking about reducing life expectancy. Yeah. You know, my life expectancy, uh, like like somebody uh, now, life expectancy for a female is maybe around 80-ish, something like that. By the time, you know, our young folk are, are, are close, their life expectancy is going to go back to 70, 73, like it was a few years ago. Right. And it's probably going to go even less if we continue to eat the way we do. It, it, it's it's really, it's it. it not only and 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 then not only will you die sooner, but you'll get be sick sooner. So instead of being sick at seventy and dying at seventy five, you're gonna be sick at fifty. Yeah, and then die at seventy. Like who wants to live that way with an amputated leg and you can't see and you're on dialysis? This is not fun stuff. Oh no. And and it's all preventable. 
that's that's the crazy thing it's preventable and, you know my my father it's we have diabetes on my father's side of the family yeah. and my father changed his diet you know he was taking the blue pill for diabetes he changed oh, yes. his diet he lost yes. weight he started exercising on the treadmill and yeah. you know he's like in his late 70s he started when he was 75 and his diabetes became normal wow. you know just See? by changing his diet adding yeah. a little bit of exercise you know they can do only do so much at that age you know he's not running the marathon on, but he's putting a little yeah. exercise into his diet and he changed the way he ate and his level became normal you know yeah, and yeah it's preventable it, it is and, and it's reversible and it doesn't mean that he's not a diabetic anymore because if he starts eating that way again he's going to be just as sick exactly but, but he's put it in remission that's really what it's done he's put it in re it's like he's it's like he had cancer and he did his own version of chemotherapy which is good diet and exercise and so now he's on the best chemo possible and his and his his diabetes is now quiet it's in remission right exactly and i noticed from my own self I, when I was in, we were talking before we started the show, we were talking about COVID and how everybody was in lockdown yeah. and how we ate a lot of things, you know, because we were stuck in the house. No, nobody had anything to do. What did right. you do? You watch yeah. TV, you ate, you know, and you were, you know, some people drank, you know, and you hear these stories and people, you know, I gained weight from, from eating. And I noticed when, after, after I got to one point, I went on the scale and my eyes popped out. I said, oh my God, I said, yeah. I am not getting to this point and I changed the way I ate I cut out the sugar completely and yeah. I'll tell you I lost my craving for sugar now yeah. when I eat something sweet I don't like it if it has too much sugar in it I taste it yeah. right away I'm like this is too sweet for me I can't eat this because yeah. you, you stop it and you lose the craving for it that's exactly it and that's the addiction that's that's it that's exactly how addiction works once you stop you know, the body will readjust itself. It's the dopamine receptors. Like there is a phenomena that will help you in the same way that it got you into trouble. It'll actually help you, but you got to get through that hard part. So you were motivated. Like you asked earlier, do you have to actually hit bottom? Uh, something has to change because you have to be willing to, to go through that discomfort of that first 10 days, 15 days, maybe up to three weeks. Um, and so for you, it was the horror of the scale. And for some people, it might be the horror of diabetes, but you know what? We, we normalize this so much. Yeah, everybody's got diabetes. It, it, it's like the, it, we're not as afraid of it anymore. Like it's, it's almost become normalized. Um, and something has to change in the person. For me personally, it was the fact that I was well, uncomfortably overweight, but it was also the fact that I hated the fact that I couldn't think about anything other than here I am eating, thinking, I'm going to be done this soon. What am I going to have next? Yeah. Like, 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 that's all I could think about. It was like, it, 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 I, I hated the fact that even though I was busy, I was a doctor, I was doing, you know, writing, and reading books that I liked. It was like this, this swarm of bees swarming around me, always interrupting, always uh, in, in my way. And I just wanted to have peace of mind. That was yeah. my bottom. So uh, a person has to hit bottom of some sort, but it's going to be different for each person. And I noticed when you said that, I was like that too. I was thinking, huh. what, you know, what am I going to eat for breakfast? What am I going to eat for lunch? Looking at the yeah. clock, what's what I'm going to have for dinner. And right. then I got to the point now it's huh. like, okay, I eat when I'm hungry, you yeah. know, and I, and uh, my body tells me, okay, you're, you're full. Cause I eat slow. I digest the food and then oh, yeah. I stop, you know? Yeah. So, yes. you know, um, I think you provided such valuable information. Like if you had to tell people, if you had to give some, maybe like a couple of, of good pointers to people, what would you say to people right now? Like if people who are really interested in about learning how to either stop the food addiction or just want to lose weight, get help and not be so reliant on, on eating or not have it in their brain all the time, you know, a couple of pointers, you know, how to get started, what they should do, you know, and to okay. put people on a good path, what would you say? Yeah, so I would say two things. Um, and can I also plug my book here? Or, or of course, yes. Yeah. I wanted you to tell okay. everybody about all your information. You have a right. wonderful website, your book, okay. and everything. Please okay. do. Yeah, so, so the first thing I would say is that um, you, ha you have to be ready. And when you feel ready, and take that moment, because it, it's not going to be just I'm ready. It'll be maybe you wake up one morning and you think, maybe I, I'm ready to do this. 
grab it. And the first thing you want to do is get support, build in support because you're going to stop eating sugar um, or whatever triggering food is there. It might be sugar and nuts. It might be sugar and or muffins. I don't know. Like some people say sugar is not a problem, but, but you know, my, my, my cake is a problem, whatever it is, you're going to sugar and maybe more than sugar. Um, I'm going to stop that. And the only way I'm going to do that successfully is I have to get support. So number one, how do I stop and when am I am I ready to stop? And then number two, what supports do I need? That might be telling people, that might be um, uh, preparing food ahead of time. It might be deciding I'm not going to go to a movie. I, I didn't go to a movie for two years because all I did at a movie was what the popcorn. Uh, <laughs> once the popcorn wasn't there, I didn't care about the movie. I mean, now <laughs> I'm back to going and, and I don't have the popcorn, but it took me a while. So you might have to decide for this month, I'm not going to do ABC because there's all this food and all this whatever. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to subject myself to, and don't feel like you're being weak. So, so that would be the first one. Stop then I get support. And then uh, know, this is the message of hope here. Know that uh, this is a hard time and it will pass. Like you said, Stacey, and this is the key piece. I want people to really hear this. You said, I don't even want it anymore. You won't even want it anymore. And Stacy has just told you this. Like, if you don't believe me, believe her. Everybody, every one of us says, we don't want it anymore. And it doesn't take that long. As long as you don't pick it up because that will reignite the desire. So I want to plug myself here. So if you want to know more about how to do this, I have my book, Food Junkies, uh, Recovery from Food Addiction, which you can get on Amazon. And I have a Facebook page called uh, I'm Sweet Enough, Sugar Free for Life, which is a free group. And uh, I invite people who want to quit sugar or uh, have already quit sugar to get support. It's a great, vibrant group uh, to do that. Um, and I have my podcast as well. And in the podcast, which is also called Food Junkies, we interview all sorts of people who are in the food addiction field. Um, you know, the latest one that's written about whatever um, uh, on sugar or food addiction. So that's that's once you've read the book and you won't just want more information in the field. Also, tell them about your wonderful website, because I personally, I, I've been on your website many times. You have provide a lot of great information. Yes. You talk about your blog. Let them know where they can find your website, because okay. I think you have a great website. Okay, thank you. So my website is called addictionsunplugged.com, addictionsunplugged.com. And also I have a YouTube site, um, which is just Vera Tarman, and that has uh, every every interview that I've ever been able to do um uh on there with lots of explanation but the website and uh, youtube as well yes yeah you know i i've read vera's book and i have to say i yes, loved you did it a great review <laughs> you. yeah well, you know i got so into your book i it was you know you had you provided such great information in that book and that book you know a lot of your pointers you know pertain to, you talked about food addiction but it also you it, it really could help someone with any addiction you know you gave some really good pointers your the, the information you provided the facts you provided i really enjoyed reading your book it was it was Thank a you. wonderful book it, you know and you know sometimes you pick up a book and you know you you, you like you it's just you turn in the next page you're like oh you know but your book i couldn't stop i couldn't put it down because it, it provided such great information and i i love the fact that that you've written this book and that you know especially now with society with so many people that are overweight i think they would get a lot out of yeah. your book so thank you for writing it i have to say thank, thank you, you so much and it's been great having you on the show you know i would love to have you come on another time maybe we could just talk about how toxic sugar is to give people an idea of you know how it really can destroy a person's body we've covered some pointers today but we can mm -hmm. maybe always go into it more deeply but thank you once again yeah and yeah. thank you once again for being on the show i i loved having you thank you so much thank you stacy